Right. And I feel like this is another area where CIA kind of gave us some clarity mm -hmm. because they have this giant recruitment engine mm -hmm. and it recruits people from all walks of life. Like when they first yes. recruited you to come in, mm -hmm. it wasn't for the job you ended up doing. That's correct. Yep. It wasn't, I was the same way that what they yep. recruited me for wasn't the actual job I ended up doing, mm -hmm. but they saw that there was this group of people that had skills and capabilities. Yes. And one of the skills and capabilities they specifically recruit for is teachability and trainability. Yep. So they find that you have this ability to learn mm -hmm. and they bring you in this huge like bucket of people come yeah. in and then they start challenging and refining your skills mm -hmm. to direct you into the one career field that's yeah. best suited for you. And they teach us the same thing, right? Like, hey, yeah. I know that you like cyber uh, <laughs> stuff and I know that you like coding and I know that you like programming, but you are actually really very good mm -hmm. at this. Yeah. This other thing, disguise or this other thing, mm -hmm. field operations or paramilitary operations or mm -hmm. mission planning or you name it, right? Targeting. Mm -hmm. So they they bring you in and they have to do that because nobody knows what the CIA does. So yeah. when you say yes. Yeah. You just start and you're like, okay, so what do you guys do now? Like now that I'm on the other side of the curtain. <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember, I remembered orientation the first day The there was a, an HR lady ahead of my small group that came in and for headquarters base officers. And every day we would ask her, what, what is it exactly? Like, what is life actually like once I get behind the desk? Cause we had a long training program and every day she was like, it just depends every no day is the same and by the third day we like we cornered her and we were like literally you walk in the door you sit down at your desk what, what do you do, do, you do next, next? <laughs> she was like oh well i'll log on to my computer or i check my emails we're like okay we're getting somewhere <laughs> like i know like like you've hired us already you don't have to sound so exciting we want to know what we're getting into <laughs> It's so true, though. Yeah. It's so true, though. But so that idea that, you know, you can develop a skill yeah. that is actually more valuable mm -hmm. than any talent that's out there. Right. And you can choose what skill you develop. I mm -hmm. think this was so interesting to me because not only did we develop some super interesting skills at CI, especially yeah. in human intelligence operations, right? Mm -hmm. You learn SDRs. You learn mm -hmm. how to control a conversation. You learn how to use elicitation. You learn how to do all sorts of things mm -hmm. that are like things that I can talk about and things that we can't talk about. Yeah. You learn how to do such an incredible set of skills mm -hmm. and you kind of walk away thinking to yourself, like, if I can learn this, yeah, I mean, I can learn anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, maybe one of the issues is that the way people think about talent, the word talent itself, you know, we are always thinking about the people who from the age of three, they were, yeah. you know, an amazing piano player, like they're talented. But maybe what talent is for most of us is, like what you said, right? It's the, when you're learning a skill set and some things come easier for you than other things, oftentimes that's based on personality type, on temperament, mm. on learning style. Yeah. Maybe that's what true talent is. Maybe that is, you know, that when when it's driving the skill set that you should really be focusing on, those are your talents. Your talents are created by your personality type, your temperament, your learning style, right? Because that's how we ended up in different tracks. I came in on a track. Um, I came in as a, a desk officer, a, a Sue. Um, and then through, they have this, the CIA has this great training program where they give you all the space training. They put you, you know, like on the job training. They give you more training, more on the job training. And through those experiences, I realized that targeting mm. was very natural for me. I'm very curious. I can sit for eight hours and deep dive in a computer which makes you nuts. That puts me to sleep. That <laughs> puts know. me to sleep. Which so, so for you, your personality type, your temperament, your yeah. learning style, it's not for you. You went to the farm, which for me, I I could have done. I recognize that I could have done that, but my strengths aren't in those areas. I did really well in the initial tradecraft training they gave me, but when it comes down to it, mm. would I want to spend 10,000 hours, <laughs> right? Honing the skill yeah. of going to dinner with a stranger and trying to convince them to convince espionage, like I, it's not, it's not my stronger, I'm not strongly suited to that area. So, you know, I think the CIA's training program is really fantastic that way. 
um, I love that they bring in people and are able to hone them within the agency right. into what they're good at. Where most jobs hire you into a position and then you're in that position until maybe you get promoted some, somewhere else. So why do you think it is that society works so differently? Because in, in social settings, in mm. public school, in uh, community college, even in four-year universities, even in Ivy League universities, you're still kind of put through like, Everybody has to do the same thing. Yeah. Everybody has to do this. Everybody has to meet these requirements. Everybody has to be able to com complete these five or seven or 12 or 18 core credit hours mm -hmm. before you even qualify yeah. to explore an interest that you might want to develop a skill in. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it works so differently for them? So I think... So I think part of it is efficiency. I think the government has a certain amount of space to be inefficient. They can bring on people who meet the basic traits that they're looking for, just like you said, teachability, adaptability, and they know that they have the space, the time, the space, the money to mold them into what's going to work best for the agency. I think in society in general, the school system, the, the school system for the masses really started during the industrial era, and it was created to create a good worker base. Right. We yep. needed a solid worker base who had basic education. And what you mean is cogs. Like the yeah. the modern day school system was created during the industrial revolution mm -hmm. to create predictable, yeah. repeatable cog type workers. People who did right. the same task over and over again yeah. with a certain level of consistency. Right. So you needed people to be able to read and write and do basic arithmetic to be able to follow instructions, yep. right? I mean, think about how the traditional school system is set up, right? To be able to take orders, follow yep. instructions, recognize authority. Yep. Be graded on their output. Right. And meet a certain production criteria in yes. order to advance to the next level. Exactly. Because at the same time, you still had wealthier people, um, you know, people in, in higher levels of society going to private school, yeah. having tutors. Their education did not look like the education for the masses. That's true. Um, the original schoolhouses, you know, were painted red because red was the cheapest color paint you could buy. You know, it's not, <laughs> we weren't like... It, it wasn't psychologically chosen because it was <laughs> extremely motivating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, you know... Red lead-based paint. That was, I bet that's cheap. exactly what it was. <laughs> cheap, dangerous paint for yeah. the masses. Well, they didn't know. <laughs> Wow. But, you know, it's so I, I think that overall it was a good step forward, but the intention behind it wasn't this benevolent, like, we want us all to be equal and have equal education and all know the same mm -hmm. things because that wasn't it. They wanted to prepare a workforce that could lift up the economy. Yeah. Right. That's what school is about in the beginning. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode. Fresh sun, you